Thank you, Mas Zitinedo, and thank you, Bia France worldwide. Good evening and good morning and good night wherever you are. My name is Mazi China Sanwaru. Mazi China Sanwaru is from Obimwa, and Obimwa is in Aba province. I serve the indigenous people of Biafra as a member of the Directorate of State and other special duties. This is I have come to this hallowed platform to talk to Biafrans to clarify their friends on the issues raging and to educate them, to reassure them that the struggle for the restoration of Biafra is something nobody born of a man or a woman can be able to destroy. We are we able to take this struggle to this level under the leadership of Mazen Namdekano because we are obedient. We believe in the command and control. We believe in the spirit of this struggle. Consistency. Our ideology has never been shaken since ever we come into this struggle. And our ideology can never be shaken at this particular point. Our leader is in the hands of the enemy. We are going to make it clear this evening that Mazin Nam the Kano have proven beyond any doubt that he wants to be followed. And for that reason, people like us, the members of the Directorate of State, IPOB worldwide, all of us have fanatically believed that whatever he tells us to do, we will do it. There is no room for disobedience. I mean, there is no room for disobedience. There is no room for insubordination. We are not going to blink. We are going, not going to tolerate. And we are not going to give any chance for any agent provocateur to penetrate this hallowed mission until Biafra is being restored. Therefore, Mazi Chinedu, I am here today calling on all Biafra, all the doubting Thomases, all the people who think that they have a reason why they should object the order given by Mazen Nam de Kano to bring their questions forward. And I will be here to clarify them as long as they are ready to listen to the superior argument. We are ready to educate them and we are ready to tell them the way forward. That is all I have to say. And the back the microphone back to you. Nde Wamazi. Nde Wamazi Chinasa. They were very short and precise. Mazi, before I open the lines, um, I want you also to tell us what you know really about that suspension of Monday City at home and how do you personally take it? Uh, personally, I'm not, taking, not talking about you being a member of the OS. Personally. Please, if you can, go on. Thank you. This is a very, very, I mean, um, unexpected question from you. You know that I'm the one who announced this sit at home on the radio. I was the one assigned to announce it officially on behalf of the Directorate of State and the IPOB leadership. And when I announce it, you know what it means. I spoke to the whole world. I spoke to their friends. I gave them our word. I gave them our belief. I gave them our plans. What we, it's one of the plans we know that we have laid down after much deliberation that we put Nigeria in a very tight corner. And it was a very good plan. Everybody accepted it. They love it. Our people embrace this particular order. We are about to say hooray that we have gotten the key. But our leader, at a point in time, he told us, suspend it. Not even at a point in time. Mas, let me go a little bit further so that people who are listening will understand. We all know when our leader was 
kidnapped in Kenya. Extraordinary rendition to Nigeria. In one month before he was brought to court, the Directorate of State, the IPOB leadership, we saw the yearn of our people that we must do something. People in Biafra land was murmuring that we must do something. There were protests going on in diaspora. The DOS, after many weeks of deliberation, second idea, second opinion, if you, if, you, if you have forgotten, it was not sit at home that our people was yearning for. They were all calling for protest in Biafra land. Many people were saying, let us go and protest. What will happen, let it happen. But carefully, we understood it was an ambush the Nigerian government wanted to lay for us. We heard the people, they called us personally, do protest in Biafra land, do this, go out. People are protesting in Europe. I, we said no, the leadership, they, very critically. We have, we, have, we have men of honor in the DOS. You may not see them talking, but they are critical thinkers. No matter their level, whatever they say makes a lot of sense. We deliberated this. We said, protesting in Biafra land will never do us any good. Reasons are, we might protest in Anambara, in our nature. People will not see it in Oka. You might protest in Oweri. People in Okibwe may not come across the protest. But we come to a conclusion that we are going to sit at home in protest against the extraordinary rendition of our leader. It was a long preparation. It was a long preparation. On the day they're supposed to bring our leader to the court, I think that was on 26th, they refused to bring our leader to the court. The following day, Barrister, the legal team went to visit our leader at the DSS headquarters. They refused them not to see our leader. Every Biafran was yearning, crying. We have people who we admitted in hospital because everybody was having that, you know, they were assuming that our leader has been killed. We were looking for a proof of life. We, who were people who used to hear from him, from the legal councils, at that particular point, the legal council told us they refused us to see him at that particular point. The DOS quickly intervened, took a decision that we are going to sit at home until there is a proof of life of our leader, Mazen Namdekano, until our leader is being released, that we are going to sit at home and other conditions which we did not make up with to the public, but we needed to achieve something. Because in negotiation of this way, you must set your, your targets high. Everybody has to understand that. We do not have to tell you the way we operate. Because that has been the code our leader has taught all of us who have worked and who are working under him. At the end of the day, the moment we activated the seat at home every Monday, um, on, on the following Monday, the, duo, the, the DSS, they called our lawyers to come and see our leader. That was a sight of relief. Many people knew that. When they, when Baris Ifanye Jiofo and his co went to meet our leader, they came out and confirmed that they met our leader, he's okay. But all the doubts that he was not alive, the proof of life that we are requesting for, at least we know our leader is okay. At this particular point, they told our leader that we have declared a seat at home. I want you to be very, you know, I want everybody to be very clear here. I want everybody to understand very clearly what the DOS have gone through because we are listening to the people. Because we want the people to be happy. Because we want, besides, it was not our people who asked us to sit at home. It was the DOS came up and put up the seat at home. At this particular point, Mazi, the legal team informed our, our leader that 
that the IPOB leadership, the people he entrusted power into, have declared they sit at home. Our leader at that point said to them that we should. That is one of the things we have presented to him. We have other plans. What we want to do. We normally say it with have thousands of plans against Nigeria. But everybody should know that our leader is in the hands of the enemy. Among all the plans we gave to him, he told us that they sit at home. We must suspend it for now. He will tell us when we can activate it. That was the first day when they, they went to see him. The first time he heard it. When the message came back to the DOS, we had a meeting. We said no, that our people want this sit at home. The first time. We said we are not going to stop. We have we have campaigned for it. We have we have spoken our words to our people. We have given this order. Besides that our leader trusted us. He knows we are capable. He knows what we are capable to do. Even our leader knows that in his absence, this leadership can unleash terror on Nigerian government that they can never recover. Our leader knows that very, very well. Our leader said, after the meeting, we said, no, we are going to go ahead and have this sit at home. We said that we have campaigned so much. The idea, the jingles are out everywhere, is bubbling. And our people have accepted this. On Thursday, Barestifanye Jofo went to him again and told him that the way this thing is going, that everywhere our people have accepted to sit at home until he's released. He said that is a very good decision. But for the second time, he's asking us to suspend it. He will tell us when to activate it. Then, when Barestifanye Jofo came out, we go into another round of meeting. We said, it remained three days for this sit at home. We cannot call it off. That's what, what, we, what, that's what we, are, we said, no, it remained three days. We cannot call this thing off. Let us also go ahead. Maybe if our leader happens to see what we are going to do, that he will say, go ahead. On that particular night of August, the whole Biafran sat at home. The news, international news medias, they carried how we shut down. And not only that, our allies, who are the Ambazonians, they closed the border. They shut there because they are our allies. Biafra land was shut down from Enugu to Ambazonia land was all shut down on that particular day, on that night of August. And at the end of the day, when Barrister Aloye Jimankong went to visit our leader, we make another presentation. We told him to print all those things. How the news, how everywhere is bubbling, how the world is talking about the shot at home, the sit down, the, the, the sit at home order, how successful it was, our leader. For the third time, he told him, Barrister, I really appreciate what IPOB leadership have done. I really appreciate the strong what they have what they are doing on, on, on my behalf. And I'm really, really happy that they can be able to stay this struggle even when I'm in the hands of but I am begging them. They should listen to me. Suspend this struggle. Suspend this sit at home order. That was the third time. Now we say okay. It is a very difficult decision to make, Mazi. For me and my colleagues in the Directorate of State, none of them is happy when our leader said that we should call it off. We have presented all the points that we need to present to him. Then on Thursday, the last Thursday, before Mazi Edoziem came on air on Friday to suspend the seat at home, we make our final move. We had a meeting with the bar minister, with the legal team. We told them we still insist that they sit at home. We proceed. We are begging. Some of us were asking for one month 
sit at home since our leader is consistently telling us to suspend this some members of the dos asked for one month some asked for 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 six weeks some said onion do allow us to do this last one then we will review it when we come to that point but the stage of what told us to, to 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 set out our points and all the things we needed besides these are not all the things we needed to hear from him there are other things that you know we can communicate with the the with the lead with the lead team the legal team at the same time when barrister joffo came back he said onion do onion do said thank you so much for all the effort you people are doing we still have the free hand to do whatever we want to do to make sure that we secure his release in all the plans we have that we want to secure the release of our leader the suspension of this sit at home was the only thing he was pointing at he continuously asked us all the decisions we made is okay by him he told us that we have the right we have all the, his backings to continue to lead this struggle but he is requesting for the last time at this particular point we come to realization that if we crosses this particular line that means it becomes an insubordination because it was an order for the fourth time we are trained in this struggle to obey the last command And the DOS have make sure they put that into practice. And that order is not going to be disobeyed. The other previous one was because we are trying to convince him. We are trying to, 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 to place our say, allow us to continue on this. But consistently, our leader said, I want you people to suspend. I will tell you the right time. You can activate this. And it will give us the maximum result we want for the restoration of Biafra. For me, it was a difficult decision. But for the fact that I know in life there are win and loss. You can lose today, you win tomorrow. You can lose for many times, but at last you will win. I, be, I am somebody who believes I can fall seven times and I will stand up seven times. No matter how many times I fall on the ground, be assured that Tina Samwaru will make sure that I stand up. I took it as an order, and we are in a struggle. We are not in democracy. And that order was not given to be deliberated. It was not given. That is an order. And for that reason, the DOS has no other option than to move in to implement that order and that order we are implementing it and we will make sure that our people go back to business go back to their work and start everything back to normal on monday it is an order and if you know that you love our leader i do not talk about myself personally because for me my personal feelings does not have anything to do with this struggle what matters is the the order given by our leader and what and the direction he wants this struggle to go my personal feelings i may have personal feeling i'm not happy it does not matter because my feelings sometimes your feelings can mislead you you may have the feeling to eat but actually you are not hungry so i may have the feeling oh it is not good but actually if you look at the content and i know what we have in the background and what we are about to do i do not see it as anything in as much as i know i do not feel good but it, it is inconsequential in this order our leader have given mercy and that's why i am coming back here again today to tell our people that sit at home order has been suspended and is suspended by mazin namdekano that is the only thing he has requested from us and we are going to obey him thank you mazin thank you mazin there's something you said now you said could have touched a struck a chord you know, I asked you about your personal personal feelings, and you mentioned that your pe yes, you're a human being. You have your personal feelings about the thing. You might not be happy personally, but it is inconsequential. That is a point, a very big point. You know, as a loyal soldier, 
that is a uh, your personal feeling doesn't matter because sometimes your personal feelings can deceive you to the overall struggle now before i open my lines because many people have have already started calling some are sending me messages they want to call they want to ask questions now before i open my lines i say what about those people that are inciting even on the social media now going above what should be in order to incite our people into because now it is in subordination what are you going to say about it please before i will open my mind now Maze, what i have to say about this thing is this this is not our first experience you know when our leader is being um, last time that was in 14th october 1st october uh, 2015 he was arrested in lagos we witnessed this similar you know um uh, insubordination and attacks we are old in the system we have learned from experience we know how to deflect we know how to detect the moles we know how to detect the nigerian agent the only worrying thing there is those ipob members the ipob principal officers who are old in this struggle but they do not know when the enemies have infiltrated the, the circle. For example, everybody know in any freedom fight and even in political situations, your leader is under the hands of is under the control under the hands of the enemy. What do the government do? Their, their next move is to destabilize the organization. That is why, from the moment they arrested our leader, you watch all their attacks, all their agents. All, all the people, all their attack lies on a DOS. Reasons are if we can be able to disorganize the DOS, divide the struggle, then the enemies can do away or do anything they want to do with our leader. That is the reason why you see many of our people. For example, I used to tell people today, I, I get it. I, I mean, I'm, I was pushed so, so much on the social media that I, I became a little bit, uh, you know, um, um, I mean, I went out of my way because the Bible says when some people speak to you foolishly, you answer them in a foolish way. For example, go to and see those people who are attacking us. Go and open their social media. Look at those names talking rubbish. Click their social media account. Either you will see some small boys who are still answering mommy, thank you, at home. Or you see some people who don't, who have not posted anything on their timeline pertaining Biafra, who do not have any, they are not even bold enough to say I am a Biafra, but they are the one now contributing, telling you that we are going to disobey, we are going not to accept what you people said. You don't need to be told that these are Nigerian agents. From our reliable information, we know Nigerian government, the DSS, they pushed a lot of money into the hands of these stupid people. You see, many of them were people dislodged from IPOB. They are also on social media with ordinary names, with fake names. If China and Waru write, even if it is something that doesn't concern the struggle, maybe I write about something that happened somewhere that doesn't matter. They come there to attack you and tell you, DOS, DOS must do this. It's very easy to decode them. We are masters in this game. In social media, nobody can compete with the IPOD media. We know all the games. Today, we have decided that we are coming after all those people. Let us stretch our hands and know who controls the social media. These are people. Agent provocateurs, members that are being recruited by Nigerian government, attacking the IPOB leadership, attacking the IPOB structure in the move only to destroy IPOB, to divide the attention of IPOB. Let them see who will take one side, other people will take one side. And that time, they we found out that IPOB have been destroyed, and they right now they can do our leader. For now, I can tell you something. The Nigerian DSS are not fools. The Nigerian DSS, they are not fools. 
they are professionals also irrespective that they disobey court order they know that the person they are holding is Mazenam the Kano, the leader of indigenous people of Biafra, the greatest liberation movement around the world. They know a leader of over 70 million people. They know that maltreating him in the DSS detention have consequences. They know. So for people being afraid that the DSS will torture our leader, they cannot do it. They can only do it if we divide ourselves. They can only do it when we allow people to come inside IPOB and trying to destroy the structure. That is the only time they can talk to him like a small boy. Mazin Namdekan is not a criminal. He's a political prisoner. And apart from that, he, he was being extraordinary rendition from another country to Nigeria. Do you think that DSS doesn't know? The Nigerian DSS knows that if we hear anything, any ill maltreatment against our leader in their hands, there are consequences and they will never try that. Therefore, any IPOB member who have now found the Facebook as a source of information, order, not information, because we are using Facebook to disseminate our information, but any IPOB officer, any IPOB member who say he belongs to IPOB and they found the Facebook, a platform where he takes order, and not from Radio Biafra, not from Maz HK Dozium, the head of DOS, or any information coming from the leadership, IPOB DOS, or any press release coming from our publicity and media secretary, Emma Powerful. That person is one. That means the person did not learn anything in IPOB, and he's not worthy to be an IPOB member. Thank you, Maz. Thank you, Mars. I'll open my lines. You know, it is real absurd, really absurd, honestly. When you hear some people, they will come out, eh, no, eh, I will only eh, take order from Mars in Namdekano. Eh, no other person can command me. I look at those people as, these are, even I, I, susp I consider them as moles. You see some people saying, okay, eh, how can you prove? Let Mars in Namdekano talk to us. And they know that he is there. You know this thing, as you said, we passed it. We we have passed through this in 2015. You see, these people, they know that our leader cannot call on phone in where he is in DSS dungeon to to radio Biafra to talk to Biafrans. But they will say no unless we hear his voice. <laughs> Marzi, we know all these things. As you say, we are masters in this game. I will.